Disclaimer! Warning! I do not have a Patreon, Discord Premium, or any pay service where you are asked to pay for reactions, or whatever. If I don't mention it in my videos, then I don't have one. These links you are clicking asking for money, you're getting scammed. Alright, so I'm going to start out with saying, I know this Batman movie is supposed to be dark and gritty, but do they really need to shoot it very dark, extremely dark, that you can barely see anything? My God, I, I enjoyed this movie, but I don't know if it's just me, but half the time I couldn't see because it's so dark. Come on, put some light into that. Like, don't put it too dark that you can't see much what the hell the Batman is doing. That's my gripe with this movie, like, the lighting is shit. Maybe it's just me, but oh my god, I can't even tell what I'm looking at, like, half the time. It's like Godzilla, like, the Godzilla movie where, like, he fights in the dark and you can't see anything. Ah! But other than that, I was going into this movie not really hyped. I wasn't really expecting much from Robert Pattinson. Although I never seen any other movie that he's been in, except all I know is he's from Twilight. I never seen anything else, so fuck me if I didn't know that he can actually act. A little bit here and there, because I can buy him as Bruce Wayne, being the rich, cocky, arrogant dude. Even he didn't do it in this one. He was more like the emo Bruce Wayne. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 3 was his, like, hair parted on the side. Yeah. Other than that, he did kind of decent. Or he dressed himself up to go to church. He didn't look emo, but other than that, you always see him just, like, depressed. Which I get. Bruce Wayne is supposed to be... No, no. Bruce Wayne is not supposed to be depressed. He's supposed... He's... Okay. What am I saying? Bruce Wayne is supposed to put on an image that he's this rich playboy that has fun and doesn't give a fuck. This Bruce Wayne is a sad emo fuck. I get it, it's year two of him being Batman, but still, pretend at least. You're always looking grim, man. Always grim. Like, how... You're supposed to, like, not cause suspicion that you may be Batman, but all you do is just make yourself look like Batman. Like, constantly hiding, it, just being by yourself. In the church, just staring people down, looking like shifty. Smile more, like Joker says. Smile, put a smile on that face. Okay, but anyway, like okay, so back to the church scene. Otherwise, you don't know I'm doing spoilers because that's what I do. So if you don't want spoilers, you shouldn't be clicking on this video. But I'll be, but I'm gonna be labeling with it as spoilers. So yeah. So in the church scene, when that random guy talked to him for like a couple seconds, and then you see him disappear into the shadows, was it just me or does, was that Joe Chill? I got a feeling that was Joe Chill, the guy who killed Bruce's parents, because he was being ominous, like saying like, hey, don't I know you? Because he looks old enough to be like the guy that killed Bruce's parents in the alleyway. Uh, and like the, the guy, the uh, district attorney who's scared to... um say the name of who he's working for, but they say it's Carmine Falcone at the end. I don't really think it's Carmine Falcone, I think it's the Court of Owls, because, like, who, he's scared shitless and doesn't want to say it. Doesn't say the name, because they could kill him and shit. It, it goes beyond this crap. The only thing I can think of is Court of Owls, because they are deep into this shit. They are deep into this shit. Uh, the Riddler, the guy who plays Edward Nigma, and they called him with a different name in this movie. Perfect casting. That's exactly what Edward Nigma is supposed to look like. Geeky looking guy. Smart and manipulative. And full of riddles, because he's a smart guy. So he does riddles, but he's not supposed to be threatening. He's supposed to look like that, like a measly looking guy. But although, also, why is Riddler in this movie turned into Jigsaw all of a sudden? They're making, he's making traps. So people can get out of, that can't get out of. But he's Jigsaw. He even has the voice. He puts on the mask and 
does the deep dark voice scary but yeah but then when he's revealed without the mask yeah edward nigma basically yeah but the deep dark voice really okay i can buy that but still perfect casting for edward nigma the guy who played the penguin i love the new york accent because gotham is supposed to be new york city they even have gotham square garden new york so yeah penguin's accent new yorkish and uh chief of police the guy that wants Batman not to be there. He has a low New York, New Jersey, New York accent. Very, very low. You can barely hear him. Yeah, it's basically New York. Who they get? Uh, the guy that plays Commissioner Gordon. Okay, Chief Gordon, not yet Commissioner Gordon. He does a decent job. He did a decent job. Like the only cop not corrupted yet. Everyone else is corrupted, of course, because it's Gotham City. Mm, the Batman suit was really good good look great it's year two he's gonna get better because i like how in this movie they make um batman look like a goddamn human in year two because he keeps on fucking up here and there like when he goes uh jumps off the building he sees he gets shocked because it's that he never has jumped off before because it's year two so he's gonna be scared for a moment and he jumps off he's having fun he's smiling so yeah Year two, guys. Year two. He's enjoying himself. But then he crashes right into the street and runs off. Okay, that's year two, Batman. He still has to fix some things around. He's still learning. Year two of Batman. Come on. They constantly say that in this movie. Year two of Batman. I like how uh, Batman just uh, just walks into the scene all the time. It's not like other Batmans where he just shows up. This one, you actually see him walk in, which is kind of weird at first because he's Batman. But then I realized, yeah, year two. You've got to embed it into your head. Year two. Because, come on. He's learning his shit. He's learning his craft. Although in the end of it, when he sneaks into the um, Iceberg Lounge, he sneaks into there like, kind of like a, like a toddler. He knocks the door and the guy comes out and like, huh? And he sneaks in so quick. But yeah, like I said, he's learning. He's learning. Uh, at the end, where all those snipers are getting after him, he's fighting them off. That's pretty cool. And then the one guy, like, point blank shoots him in the chest. He needs to get better armor. Like I said, year two, he hasn't fully grasped the technology of better armor on his suit. He's still learning. That's the theme here. He's still learning. Alfred, played by Andy Serkis. Why is he such a dumbass in this movie? You would think that like a mysterious letter comes to the house and he opens the goddamn thing. I thought you were in like the special forces, man. How are you not sus of this? Because it says in, in mysterious writing and then he opens it to the Batman and he doesn't realize yet and the phone's ringing. Come on, Alfred. What? You're, that's the dumbest moment Alfred has ever had in any movie or in the entire franchise. But yeah, they had to uh, have him mobile for something for Bruce Wayne to fight for. Bruce Wayne is treating like Alfred like shit because like you're not my father. Like goddamn, dude. God damn. But yeah, Bruce Wayne's like in his late twenties, early thirties, around twenty eight. As he said, it's been twenty years since the uh, killing of Bruce Wayne's parents. So he was like eight or ten at a time. So it makes him around twenty eight, thirty, around there. How old was he when he was an orphan? I forget how old he was. But yeah, other than that, pretty good. But Alfred is a complete dumbass. Selena Kyle, okay. The mask doesn't do much. You can still see like half her face. How Commissioner Gordon does not see who she is beyond me. At least Batman sh covers half his face. Selena Kyle, not really. Even Edward Nigma covered his face but he puts on glasses <sighs> the batmobile looks pretty cool the bat cycle looks pretty cool the bat cave we didn't see too much it was just like a dark basement oh and who's that other maid the one that picked up at the phone and said oh alfred got kit an hour ago i don't know who that is but it reminds me of like the what's her face from the batman 60 tv show or if Alfred and What's-Her-Face knew that Batman and Robin, who were Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, 
Speaking of Dick Grayson, I love how they put a Bloodhaven reference in there for the future home of Nightwing. What else is there? Like I said, him, Batman just coming in and just beating the shit out of him and getting his ass kicked. Normal. He's just begun in year two. Again, what's a year two? It's embedded in my brain. But wow, this movie's long. Huh, I enjoyed it. Some of it was kind of slowish. But I enjoyed it. But it was a three hour and 30 minute movie. Jesus. Huh. But yeah. Other than that, I enjoyed it. It was kind of darkish. Really darkish. I can't see much. There were some stupid things here and there. But other than that, it was decent. Would I watch it again? Yeah. If it was on somewhere, I'll watch it. Like, I'm not going to go watch it again. If, like, someone has it playing, I'll just stop and look at it for a while. It's interesting. Oh, and I like how they have the Joker thing at the end. Like, you know it's Joker. Because it instantly said, like, you make me like that to make me look like a clown. And then he does his laugh. Not perfected yet. Beginning Joker origin story. So, yeah. Uh, Carmine Falcone, played by John Torturo. I love it. The man is amazing in anything he does. So, Carmine Falcone is amazing, but he got shot to death. So, boo. Anyways, I don't know what else to say. I give it a decent rating. That's it for now. Humanoid Nation, Humanoid Freak Out. Bye.